I've noticed that many service providers and businesses that would normally consider themselves to be spiritual people or want to live by spiritual or more higher self values, so for some strange reason, they toss that out the window when it comes to marketing and sometimes the rest of their business, but particularly marketing and sales. So I'd like to talk to you about that today in this video. And hopefully by watching this video or listening to this episode, you'll regain a purer intention as you do your marketing. Because as we know, when it comes to spiritual growth or personal growth, um, addressing all of you who are eager to grow, uh, to become more aligned with your deeper values or your higher self to embody more of that in your day-to-day -day work, AKA spiritual growth, right? If you're eager for that, you know that the more pure and intense your intent uh, towards growing is in every moment, the more meaningful life becomes because you probably perhaps can see that every single moment is a potential opportunity for spiritual growth, no matter what it is that's in front of us, no matter what it is that we're doing or the challenges that we're being, that we're faced with. And yet you start to learn marketing and then you, you somehow doubt your own spiritual values and some marketer says, you've got to use manipulative sales funnels. They don't say manipulative, they say sales funnels, but sales funnels for most of us, the way that we've been taught are quite manipulative, okay? You just, like, I'm just, I'm really genuinely surprised. Like, it's like you toss your values out the window because you believe some marketing expert knows what they're doing. And even though what they're teaching you feels off or the way they're doing it feels off, you still listen to them. You still pay attention eventually you may start to justify a bunch of the things they're doing because you like them in other ways, but you know that a lot of their marketing is at, at least, at the very least, not pure in its altruism or it, it's like the, the marketing people, they pretend they're being nice and altruistic to, to you. Oh, I'm gifting you this with this. This is a, a free thing. Just to give, your, give us your email address to get this free thing. Like everything seems so altruistic and like it's a gift. It's a, but then the, the backside that you don't see, the underbelly of it, is there's so much strategizing that to look pure and wholesome, but it's really to convince you step by step into buying their thing. And so I'm just, I'm genuinely interested in, in your thoughts on, on this because it's like, why don't you trust yourself that the stuff they're telling you, you don't have to do it. Like it's not, it's not aligned with your spirituality or with your values. So, but it, you know, some people say, they don't tell me this, but I, I think this is what they're thinking. Maybe this is what you're thinking. But George, I just have, the marketers just have to do their thing. I just have to do the evil thing um, of marketing. And then when the clients come to me, then I can be my spiritual and integrity self with my clients. Because that's really where the real work is, is with my clients. Whatever the marketing is, is just a necessary evil, right? It's a means to an end. And here's lies in the problem. Herein lies the problem is that the first, I mean, essentially, the contact you have, your business has with the world starts off as manipulation or as a means to an end or as a necessary evil, as doing things that feel questionable to you. That's how you want to start off your connection with, the, with the, your potential clients and with the rest of the world. That's how you start. So that, oh, eventually they get convinced, they get persuaded, um, charmed, perhaps hip hypnotized to buy from you. And then now you can be your aligned, integrity, spiritual, good self as you do your work. I've said this before, and it's worth repeating again and again. Your real work 
starts in your marketing. Your values actually impact a lot more people through your marketing than your clients. Let's think about this. Hold on, really think about this. Your marketing, your, your blog posts, your videos, your sales pages, your website touches a lot more people than the few who eventually work with you. Isn't that right? How, how many people need to go to your website or to see, a, to see your blog posts, all your many blog posts or your videos? Or How many people need to do that before one person ends up being your client? I don't know how many for, for you. Is it 10? Is it 100? Is it 1,000? Is it more than that? Let's, let's say 100 people need to visit your website and you get one client. So do you not care about the other 99 people? They're just tire kickers? No, of course you, as a spiritual person, right? You care about everyone. And we should care about everyone. I mean, in the general sense, we don't have time to literally care for each person with the same amount of energy and time, but we care about the well-being of everyone because we have those kinds of values, you and I. So do you care about the 99 other people who don't buy from you? And do you just care about that one person who does buy from you? If you, I know you care about it. So if you put your caring into your marketing, that means you say, I'm going to be aware of what doesn't feel right to me in marketing, what's manipulative, what's most of the marketers that are teaching us. It's very manipulative stuff. I mean, I, I feel it because I learned from many of them. And many of them are my peers, my colleagues in my industry. It's mostly manipulative BS. Not BS, because some of it works to get a few sales in the short term. But it's BS in terms of misalignment with your spiritual being. And so back to this idea that you care about your spiritual growth. So let's not throw your spiritual growth out the window when you do marketing or sales, work on that kind of stuff. Well, getting clients can't be spiritual. I'm, I, I need to pay the bills. And this is the problem. When you start to strategize from desperation, you've lost your way. You've lost your way because it's like, oh, I got to pay the bills. So let me just ignore my spiritual values for, for, for now. Um, I got to do the things that work to get sales, George, just get clients. And then I'd be spiritual with Michael. You don't have to do that. Let me, just, <laughs> I've been trying to tell, tell this to you for, you know, all these years. You don't have to do that. Let me tell you how you can spiritual, fully spiritual, fully aligned with deeper values of caring for the humanity and yet have effective marketing and get lots of clients. Ready? Here's how you do it. You care, you bring your caring into market research. Okay, so the reason why your marketing is not working, there's, there's um, I'll say there's, uh, there's three reasons, okay, why marketing basically doesn't work, why you're not getting clients, you're not getting as many as you want. There's alignment, there's reach, and there's trust. The art method, okay, alignment, reach, and trust. Alignment is, is your product and service so aligned with the person in front of you and what they want that they say, of course, I'm going to buy that from you. Or do you not care enough for them and only care about your own thoughts and your own peak experiences and your own modality? Because if you only care about your own self, you say, how come, George, people aren't buying my stuff? You're just thinking about yourself. I mean, you're a caring person, but you forgot to activate you're caring in your market research. You just forgot about that. You didn't realize that that was a thing. Yes, it is. And you care. But when it comes to your service and your product, you are so, not you, by the way. I'm just saying the person who is saying, how come I tell all my friends and I post on social media about my service and nobody buys it or not enough people buy it? Let's talk about first alignment. It's because what you're selling, people don't want. Yeah, people don't want what you sell. That's why you're not getting enough sales. I'm sorry. I, I, you know, you think your thing is so great, but you've been in your head too long. You've been in yourself too long. You have forgot to activate your caring when it comes to your product design. 
your service design, how you, what, you're, what program you're putting together. You forgot that the caring starts there. And how do you care? You care by talking to your potential clients and saying, what would you like me to design? Because we have limited time on this earth and I wanna put my efforts into doing stuff that you actually want. So tell me what you want and I'll put it together and I'll sell it to you and then you'll buy it because that's what you want. Now you might say, well, George, they don't know what they want. No, that's not true. They do know what they want. You just have to ask them the questions to pull it out of them. You know, and I don't have the questions in front of me right now. Um, if you want, if you if you want to, you could take my core uh, program, my online course about market research. But the questions are basically something like this: the questions are, what have you been buying? in my area of expertise. Because the, the fact that they're spending money on something that's remo even remotely related to what you offer means they want it. They spend, people spend money on what they want, not on what they need. It's very important. People spend money on what they want, not on what they need, because they don't know what they need. They know what they want. And you think you know what they need, but do you know what they want? because that's where the money is going, is what they want. People, as we know, we often spend time, spend money on things that we want, but don't, shouldn't, right? Don't really need junk food, you know, um, whatever. It's like, we spend time and money on things that are not good for us, but we, it's pleasurable, it's desirable. It's something we want. When it comes to your life coaching, your holistic healing, your mentoring, your guidance, they do want something in regard, regards to that. You just have to figure out what it is. You have to talk to enough people. And this is where your caring comes in. If you say, yeah, of course, yes, I know I'm caring. And now I, I realize I have to activate my caring by talking to more people. This is where I'm not, this is what I'm not doing. I'm not talking to enough people. You are not talking. I mean, if you have trouble saying, how come people aren't buying this thing? I have one answer. The first answer for you is you're not talking to enough people. If you talk to enough people and say, something's off with this program of mine, this service of mine, because people aren't buying it. And I'm just curious, what do you buy? What, what, what are you buying? And, or what are you seeking? What are you buying? Whether it's related to my thing or not, okay? But you know, we could talk about what you're buying. I mean, even remotely related to my thing. What are you buying? Because that's what is a clear indication of what you want. And I want to align my service to what people like you want. So that's alignment, number one. Number two is reach. Reach is, I've, I talk about this all the time, <laughs> Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, collaborations, um, or content that goes viral uh, because you have put, up, put out enough content. You know, let, let's talk about each of these very briefly here. Facebook, Instagram ads, I have a whole course on that if you're interested, but it's essentially, it's like, wouldn't you like to pay $10, $10 US to reach a thousand Brene Brown fans or name the celebrity or influencer that, um, that you like to reach their fans? Yeah, $10 can reach you a thousand Brene Brown fans. Did you know that? Brene Brown, Eckhart Tolle, Pema Chodron, um, I don't know, name, name the thought leader that is famous, that's well known. Tony Rob, I don't know, Tony Robbins, Marie Forleo, whatever. I mean, just name, name whoever it is, but chances, Glennon Doyle, chances are, you know, you know, Hay House, Sounds True, whatever. Chances are you can reach a thousand of those people with $10. Did you know that? That's the genius of Facebook and Instagram ads. This is also why people hate it, right? People say, oh, evil, evil, Meta's evil, Facebook's evil because they take our data and sell it to advertisers. Who are the advertisers? Me. They're selling it to me and you, the advertiser. Yeah, you pay 10, I, I paid, if I didn't, if Facebook didn't take, didn't take your data and told me that you like Brene Brown, I wouldn't be able to spend $10 and reach you and, and 999 other people. So $10, that's all you need at first. I mean, no one's gonna buy your thing after seeing you scrolling by your thing once. That's what it means to reach someone. They at least scroll past your, your, your ad, at least scroll past it. Some of them will stop and look at it. I'm looking at my phone. So a thousand people at least scrolling past, some of them will look at it. 
And then they might go, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. And they keep scrolling. And then the third or fourth time you reach them, so $40, they might finally pay attention and go, oh, wow, who's this person? It's interesting. $40, are you willing to spend that? That's reach, okay? 40 bucks. I'm not saying you're going to get a client for 40 bucks. You might, but this is why I talk all day long about why aren't you doing Facebook and Instagram ads? Generally don't. Oh, because they're evil. Um, well, you could say, we could say every, everything is, you could say Facebook, Instagram is evil, and yet they have been, they have been essential for so many small businesses like mine and like people like you, small, small businesses, like, I, I don't know how to reach people. Oh, I can pay $10 and reach a thousand of the right people. Oh my God. What is, what an amazing tool. Yeah. So Facebook is evil. Yes. And it's also the, the flip side of it. It's also helping solo and micropreneurs like me and you to reach a thousand people for $10. Is that evil? No. I mean, like I said, it's two sides of the same coin. They take the data and sell it to us. So that's reach. Okay. And reach has, you can do ads or you can do collaborations. So other people who have an audience similar sized as you, maybe you have 50 fans right now. They have 50 fans. You do interviews with each other and now you've each reached another five people. There are 50 fans, right? Maybe not all 50 will watch it, but maybe five of them will watch it. So now you've, you know, you, you spend an hour swapping interviews with somebody else, half an hour, them interviewing you, half an hour, you interviewing them. So an hour and you've reached five more people. Why, why is that? That's great. Why wouldn't you do that all day long? Right? Well, reach people with a similar sized audience as you, and you can do that all day long. Right. It's an ad. It's like if instead of spending an hour with one potential client, you're spending an hour and reaching five potential clients. You know, not one on one, but at least they're seeing your video or reading your blog post or something. So swapping. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep going here. The, the last one I said art, uh, alignment, reach, and trust. And trust is what we started this video with, which is having pure intentions in your marketing. And as we were talking about, like if you do marketing really aligned with your spiritual values, with your deeper values, and you say, cut the BS out, the stuff that I'm learning elsewhere, I'm tolerating other people's BS and manipulations and subtle manipulations or overt manipulations, I, I'm going to cut that stuff out and I'm going to listen. When I create content, I create content to help. I create content to delight. There's a pure intention there to serve. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to try to, I know, I'm sorry. I did mention some of my courses in this video, but I wasn't trying to sell you the courses. I honestly wasn't. I was trying to communicate this framework and like help you out. If you, if you never buy my courses, I'm honestly okay with that. That's the practice. Are you willing to do that? I think you're willing because you have that deep sense of caring. And, and you activate your caring and your content to say, even if you don't buy a single thing from me, I'm going to show up with courage and conviction and caring in my content. Even if you don't buy a single thing from me ever, I'm still going to serve you with content. I'm still here to minister, to care as a cause of what I believe in, what I believe will help humanity. And in your offers, when you're selling a program or an event or a product or a workshop or a, or a coaching service, do you believe in what you're selling? Have you done the alignment work of you're selling something you know people want? Well, if you're selling something people want, why are you shy about selling it? You should be out there with gusto, with joy, saying, oh my gosh, I know what you want. Here it is. I'm so excited to present to you what I know you want because I've talked to you know, 30 of you, and I know this is something you want. So I took that, those 30 conversations and went back into my lab, my home office, and I designed this thing that you want. So here it is. I'm so excited to share. Why wouldn't you do that with gusto and joy? Of course you would. That's pure intentions in marketing too. I don't have to use any tricks to try to get you to buy. No tricks. I'm just telling you what I think you want, this product or service at a price that I think you, you would find a good deal. That's it. Pure intentions in marketing and sales allows us to really do it with joy, to do it with heart, 
And by doing that, and, and, and therefore much more sustainably, we, we actually, we don't burn out because we, we show, we don't even have, it no longer becomes a chore, I think, because we get to, to serve content in a way that's uplifting humanity, uh, no matter if anybody buys from us. Now, of course, of course, if you keep doing it, people will buy from you, but that's not your main, that's not your like, that's not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about, that's what I'm, what I'm thinking about service. And then when it comes to selling, which you sell occasionally, at least once or twice a month, you say, hey, here's my coaching package. Here's my coaching subscription. Here's my workshop. Here's my online course. Here's my group program. I put this together based on conversations with a bunch of you. I think this is what you want. What do you think? It's honest. I don't have to use any tricks to get you to do it. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, may we all find a purer intention in our marketing and selling so that we are pulled not push we have to, we don't hopefully no one has to push us to do our marketing we have to, oh what a chore oh i gotta show up for my content oh i now gotta remember the sell no it's 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 out of a pull towards the caring for the audience that we show up consistently so thank you for joining me for this and i hope this is helpful take care